Lab Guy here. I hope you liked the last video. Sorry, it was kind of long. But it was uh, also a lot of work for me. That's probably the most editing I've ever done. You poor guys had to sit through an hour and five minutes of that stuff. And it took me about six hours to edit that sucker. At any rate, our dear friend, the big televisor, is operating quite well now. It's still got a bug or two, of course. The picture's locked up, shifted over. And we can, we can fuss with it and, and make it uh, do the right things, but we'll figure it out over time. At any rate, as you can see, it's running. The color test pattern is on it. Two videos ago, some of the viewers pointed out in the comments that I forgot to mention that photographing 12 and a half frame per second video with a 30 frame per second video camera or a 25 frame per second video camera causes a horrible flicker and a rolling stripe in the picture. That's just the way it is. Uh, someone mentioned that they make a camera that can you can adjust the exposure rate or whatever and get rid of that and I've done research I even contacted John Hess at Filmmaker IQ uh, he's a professional filmmaker and asked him specifically about photographing these kinds of displays uh, with video cameras and he did make an excellent suggestion for using a 25 frame per second camera and you take your video and you European guys can try this and you take the same video and you put it in your main video track in the editor drop it a, another copy of the exact same video in the video editor in the um, secondary track and shift it one frame and then use a halfway dissolve to blend the two tracks together and the alternating frames in 25 frame per second will fill in the black stripe so if any of you in Europe have the gear give it a go and let me know how it works I, I don't have the uh, I don't have a 25 frame per second camera though I'm open to donations for free I've spent enough money this week so moving on uh, back to the subject of the big televisor it is for all practical purposes completed it has its own power supply now it is a fully standalone AC powered unit it has uh, four video inputs and which accepts the composite black and white video signal for the sync and in the future uh, that will actually be able to display the video on that line and RG and B inputs which you see being displayed here now uh, this is a color televisor <laughs> they can't play a black and white signal yet we'll be fixing that it'll be Excellent, excellent. Don't make that sign, Rich. You don't, you don't want to get in trouble. What a world we live in. So, let's uh, take a tour around this thing and see how it came out, shall we? Here we are looking at the right side of the televisor. We have the disc and the motor, which make up the primary element of a Nipkow disc-based mechanical television. Over here is the illuminator box, which I covered in another video. And this is the new main board. The last time you saw those circuits, they were constructed on plug-in breadboard. Down here is a surplus computer power brick 
which had a barrel barrel plug on it. I didn't even cut that off. I simply bought a mating female connector and mounted it so that it faces into this lower deck so that the power brick is plugged into it. The power brick takes a standard 3-pin EIA style computer cord or EIC computer cord. I added a DC off-on power switch. As I mentioned, I built everything onto this board. This is a two-part board. It has the upright piece at 90 degrees is holding the six jacks for the four inputs, the luminance or a composite video and RGB inputs. And you can see the box from the last video, the box that we built. On this board is the op amps. I used a quad op amp this time, a LM324N, and it's performing the sink separating function. This potentiometer adjusts the sink level. This second chip is the 4046 phase locked loop, and there's a pot that I don't know that you can see right back here. My finger is on it and that is for adjusting the motor feedback signal to the phase detector. And then on the heat sink is the output field effect transistor that controls the motor speed. We have a motor current dissipating resistor to take some of the load off of the power transistor which runs extremely hot without it. In the absence of this resistor the power transistor has to drop all of the waste heat. So this is 4.7 ohms 3 watts. It starts out with 12 volts, goes through the motor, comes back from the motor through these banana jacks and into the power transistor which couples that to ground and controls the motor current and thus the speed and phase. And that's pretty much the circuitry. The board is mounted on standoffs it's hand wired underneath. The DC power is the only thing directly soldered to the board on two loops, that, but that unsolders quickly if I need to remove the board for service. Everything else is plug in. The motor plugs in. This is the power to the illuminator, 12 volts. This is the three RGB signals going to the illuminator. You'll note that this is the cable that I made for this box yesterday and it was cut off right there and I put another six pin plug on this end to couple it to the board to make this eminently serviceable this final plug over here or not the final one but this plug is the Nipkow disk photo sensor feedback that detects the sink holes in the edge of the disk as it spins and then there's one more plug right here that connects the input jacks to the main board and allows for removing the jack panel when I need to do any kind of servicing on this board. This is a quick look at the back end of the big televisor. This is my hand whittled jack mount for the six jacks. As I mentioned yesterday, we don't use the right and left audio inputs yet. I plan to put an audio amplifier and speakers in the event that I should play audio to the televisor. It's a good idea. Here's the box again that I built yesterday and it has the short RCA cable that connects in the RGB and this signal is the composite video with the sync pulses which we will use to sync the motor. Eventually I will add circuitry that will take the black and white signal, synthesize an RGB signal, and I'll have a selector switch to select either color mode, which requires the RGB input, or simple monochrome mode with one input that will feed the black and white signal to the illuminator box and synthesize black and white that way. And that pretty much is everything that makes up a televisor. They're not not very complex. So once again I'd like to thank you for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. I like doing these projects and being able to make videos about my projects and projecting my passion out into the ether 
for others to uh, pick up on, to enjoy, to hate, to comment on, uh, whatever you get out of it. Um, that's great. I thank you all for watching. Um, thanks for watching this series. And uh, we will be moving on to the cathode ray televisor is the next upcoming project. And in parallel with that, as I make progress, I will talk about Eleanor RGBY. That is the 104 Eleanor RGBY NBTV color video generator. That project is taking a little longer than I anticipated, mainly because I haven't had the time to devote to it. And it is a combination of hardware and software. I have very high confidence in my hardware and I am uh, refreshing my memory on Arduino programming. I've done quite a bit of it, but it has been a couple of years, so I'm a bit rusty and coming back up to speed rapidly on that. And so uh, as, as that comes online uh, and I accomplish anything, I, you know, it's no reason for me to show you a video of, look, I nailed it to a board. Whoop de freaking do. Uh, if I show you a video of, of, of a project, it should be of some significant milestone. Don't you agree? So stay tuned for that. We will be going into the cathode ray televisor with the little one inch CRT and, uh, and we'll uh, proceed down that avenue next and uh, intersperse that with some, some of the Eleanor. And I hope you all enjoy that and look forward to things to come. So in my usual way, I guess I'll say until next time, Lab Guy out. I even contacted John Hess at the excellent well <laughs> Okay, let's try again.